Right? So it's quite remarkable um, and not unexpected that when you're exposed to sunlight, right, you have all these different types of wavelengths of light and radiation that's penetrating into your epidermis, into your dermis, and some of it goes even into your body cavity. And so all of this is energy. And so as a result, the body has taken advantage of it. And I'll give you just a couple of examples. We know that when you're out in sunlight, you feel more relaxed, right? And um, your blood pressure goes down. Why? Well, one explanation is that when you're exposed to sunlight, you immediately release nitric oxide in your skin cells. And that causes vasodilation, i.e. it's a medication that could be used for decreasing blood pressure. Also, it stimulates then the enzyme to actually make more nitric oxide. So you have two processes going on simultaneously. One is you're instantly releasing nitric oxide, making you feel more relaxed. And secondly, it will stimulate now the production of nitric oxide so that this effect lasts for a longer period of time. What's also interesting, and I think that, that your listeners know this, carbon monoxide, of course, is incredibly toxic. But it turns out that when you're exposed to sunlight, the hemoglobin molecule uh, reacts to sunlight and releases a little bit of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide in very tiny amounts will also cause vasodilation and cause a decrease in blood pressure. It also has a uh, direct effect on your nervous system. It looks like it may be playing a role in neurotransmission and may have anti-inflammatory activity as well. We also know that there's a um, gene that's principally in your pituitary gland, what's called the POMC gene. It turns out that that's also in your epidermis. And this uh, pro opiocortin uh, melanocortin uh, peptide, when it's exposed to sunlight, that gene is turned on and of that gene, besides adrenocorticotropin, which can stimulate cortisol production in your uh, adrenal glands, also produces beta endorphin. And I'm sure you listen, listeners know that beta endorphin is what we call what's made for the runner's high. And so we've always known that when you're exposed to sunlight, you feel better. And we think that one of the explanations is that is that you're making beta endorphin in your skin. Dr. Parrish many years ago actually did a study and took healthy adults, put them in a tanning bed with UVA and UVB, showed that the beta endorphin levels increased. We did a separate study and asked the question, what part of the UV spectrum is doing this? And so we took human skin cells, keratinocytes, exposed to ultraviolet B, ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B. And we showed it was ultraviolet B radiation that was responsible for increasing the production of beta endorphin in your skin. So those are just some of the, of the biochemicals. We also know that when you're exposed to sunlight, mainly the UVA now, because, so UVB is the highest energy light, right? Or radiation, you can't see it. And it only goes into your epidermis, right? You would think the highest energy would penetrate deep into your body cavity, it doesn't. And the reason is that your DNA and proteins in the epidermis and the pro-vitamin D, 7 hydroxyl cholesterol absorb ultraviolet B radiation. So very little ever gets below the epidermis. But UVA has less energy. It's not efficiently absorbed by proteins and DNA. So now it will go not only into the epidermis, but it goes into the dermis. And it will influence a variety of different uh, activities in your dermis, including having an effect on your immune system by causing um, it, it to be a little bit more what's called immune tolerant. Um, and we think it plays a very important role um, in health. It also turns out that we also did another study is that you have what are called clock and period genes 
in your cells. These regulate the circadian rhythm within your cell. And we showed that UVB radiation will definitely upregulate um, period and clock genes in your skin cells. We also know that because visible light is not being absorbed by your epidermis or dermis, it will go through your skin and into your body cavity. And so when you're exposed to sunlight, you have all this blue, uh, all this green and red and <laughs> um, radiation that's hitting your organs. We have not a clue what that effect is and whether or not it's beneficial or not beneficial, but it is a curiosity um, that I've been always very interested in. And then finally, as you probably know, an, an FDA would not permit companies to be promoting these red LEDs for stimulating hair growth, right? Or stimulating collagen synthesis in your lips or elsewhere, right on your face, right? Red light, especially high intensity red light, definitely stimulates fibroblast activity and stimulates collagen synthesis. And, and, um, and so red uh, LEDs and blue LEDs have been used actually in surgery to help in wound healing. And something else to think about. And, you know, originally people thought that uh, if you use the UVB sunscreen, that's all you needed to prevent skin cancer and damaging effects to the skin. And that permitted huge amounts of UVA to get in. And we now realize that actually that's not helpful for you at all. And so as a result, broad spectrum sunscreens are now recommended. And so I think for me, it makes good sense to either be exposed to direct sunlight, sensible sunlight uh, for a period of time, and then to wear good sun protection. Um, and the best sun protection by far is clothing because it really is a very efficient absorber and you don't have all these chemicals on your skin um, constantly. Um, and so I typically recommend, and, and, um, and just for your audience to be aware, I helped to develop um, with Ontometrics a um, app called dminder.info. So D-I-M-I-N-D-E-R dot I-N-F-O. So dminder info. And, and on that, it, it is picking up the satellite UV coming in to earth. So we can basically tell you anywhere on the planet when to go outside, how long to stay outside for your skin type uh, to make adequate vitamin D, get some sensible sun exposure, and then to put sun protection on to prevent the damaging effects from excessive exposure.